Have you ever started reading something and immediately felt drawn in? That magical moment when the words seem to leap off the page and pull you into the story or the argument being made? That's the power of a good introduction. It's the hook that grabs your attention and makes you want to know more. It's like a firm handshake, a warm smile. It sets the tone for the entire interaction. Just as a good first impression can make or break a social encounter, a strong introduction can determine whether your reader stays or moves on. In writing, your introduction is your chance to grab the reader's attention and make them want to keep reading. It's your opportunity to make a compelling case for why they should invest their time in your words. Think of it as the literary equivalent of a first impression. You wouldn't want to start a conversation with a stranger by mumbling or being vague, would you? You only get one shot, so you want to make a count. The stakes are high, but with the right approach, you can make a lasting impact. Why are introductions so important? They provide context. They set the stage. They give your reader a roadmap of what to expect, guiding them through the journey you're about to take them on. They tell the reader what to expect. A well-crafted introduction can make the difference between a reader who is engaged and one who is lost. A strong introduction should pique the reader's curiosity and make them eager to delve deeper into your writing. It should spark a sense of wonder and anticipation. Imagine stumbling upon an article titled The Secret to Perfect Chocolate Chip Cookies. The title alone is intriguing, but the introduction needs to seal the deal. Wouldn't you be more likely to read on if the first line was tired of flat, bland cookies? I was too, until I discovered this one simple trick. This line speaks directly to a common problem and promises a solution. Then if it started with baking cookies is a complex process? The latter is dry and uninviting, likely to make the reader lose interest before they've even begun. The key to a captivating introduction is to hook your reader from the very first sentence. This can be a challenge, but it's also an opportunity to showcase your creativity and understanding of your audience. This can be achieved through a provocative question, a surprising statistic, a relatable anecdote, or a bold statement. Each of these techniques can draw the reader in and make them want to know more. Whatever approach you choose, make sure it's relevant to your topic and immediately grabs the reader's attention. The introduction should be a natural lead-in to the rest of your content. Think of your introduction as an invitation to a literary adventure. Make it irresistible. Your goal is to make the reader feel like they're about to embark on an exciting journey. What are some of your favorite ways to start a piece of writing? Do you have a go-to technique that never fails to engage your readers? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's start a conversation about the art of crafting compelling introductions and learn from each other's experiences. We've all been there. You're engrossed in a book, an article, or even a report, and you come across a new section. The heading seems interesting enough, promising new insights or a shift in the narrative, but then you start reading and it feels disjointed, like a completely different conversation. It's as if the heading and the content are speaking two different languages. Just like the introduction to your entire piece is crucial, so too are the introductions to each individual section. They set the tone and prepare the reader for what's to come. Think of them as mini introductions, guiding the reader through your thoughts and ensuring a smooth flow of ideas. They are the signposts that keep your reader on track. So how do you craft compelling section introductions? It starts with understanding the purpose of the section. Start by considering the purpose of the section. What key points are you trying to convey? What is the main message you want your reader to take away? Once you have a clear understanding of the section's objective, you can use the introduction to pique the reader's interest and set the stage for the information that follows. This is your chance to hook them in. A well-crafted section introduction should act as a bridge, seamlessly connecting the previous section to the current one. It should provide a smooth transition that feels natural and logical. One effective technique is to use questions. Questions engage the reader and make them think. They create a sense of curiosity and anticipation. For example, if the previous section discussed the importance of clear communication, you might start the next section with a question like, but what happens when communication breaks down? This immediately engages the reader and encourages them to consider the implications of the previous section's content. Another technique is to use a relevant quote or anecdote. This can provide a fresh perspective and add a personal touch to your writing. Remember to answer the question you pose before moving on to the next section, ensuring that your reader feels satisfied and informed. This closure is crucial for maintaining the flow and coherence of your piece. 
Additionally, using transitional phrases can help guide your reader. Phrases like, building on that idea or in contrast to, can provide clear signals that help the reader follow your train of thought. What are some other ways you can think of to smoothly transition between sections and keep your reader engaged? Perhaps you have your own unique strategies that work well for you. Let's discuss in the comments. Share your thoughts and let's learn from each other. After all, writing is a journey best taken together. Questions are powerful tools in writing. They can be used to spark curiosity, encourage critical thinking, and create a more interactive experience for the reader. When used effectively, questions can transform your writing from a passive monologue into an engaging dialogue. But how do you formulate questions that truly resonate with your readers? The key is to ask questions that are relevant, thought-provoking, and directly related to the topic at hand. Avoid asking questions that are too obvious or easily answered with a simple yes or no. Instead, strive for questions that encourage reflection, analysis, and deeper engagement with the material. For instance, instead of asking have you ever felt overwhelmed by technology, you could ask, how has the constant influx of technology impacted your daily life? Once you've posed a question, it's important to provide a thoughtful and comprehensive answer before moving on. Remember, you're not just asking questions for the sake of asking, you're using them to guide the reader through your thought process and lead them to a greater understanding of the topic. By answering your own questions, you demonstrate your expertise and build trust with your audience. What are some of the most thought-provoking questions you've encountered in your own reading? Share your examples in the comments below. Let's inspire each other. Section 4. Calls to Action, Keeping Readers Engaged Have you ever finished reading something and felt a sense of closure, a desire to take action, to delve deeper into the topic? This feeling is not accidental. It's a carefully crafted experience designed to leave a lasting impression on you. That's the power of a well-crafted call to action. It serves as a bridge between passive consumption and active engagement, transforming readers from mere spectators into participants. It's that final nudge, that gentle push that encourages your reader to go beyond simply consuming your words and actively engage with your ideas. This engagement can take many forms, each tailored to the content and the audience. Calls to action can take many forms, from inviting readers to leave a comment or share their thoughts on social media. This not only fosters a sense of community, but also extends the conversation beyond the initial reading experience, to encouraging them to sign up for a newsletter. Newsletters can keep your audience engaged over the long term, providing them with regular updates and exclusive content. Or visit a website for more information. Directing readers to additional resources can deepen their understanding and keep them coming back for more. The key is to make your call to action clear, concise, and relevant to the content you've just presented. A well-placed call to action can significantly enhance the reader's experience and drive meaningful engagement. Don't be afraid to be direct and tell your readers exactly what you want them to do. Clarity and confidence in your call to action can make all the difference. For example, if you've just written an article about the benefits of meditation, you might conclude with a call to action like this. Ready to experience the transformative power of meditation for yourself? This question not only piques interest, but also sets the stage for the next step. Download our free guided meditation audio and start your journey to inner peace today. This call to action is not just an invitation. It's a promise of value and a clear next step. This call to action is clear, concise, and directly related to the article's content, making it more likely that readers will take action. The more aligned your call to action is with the reader's interests, the more effective it will be. How do you feel about calls to action in writing? Do they inspire you to take the next step, or do they feel like an interruption? Do you find them effective? Your feedback is invaluable in understanding what works and what doesn't. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your insights can help create more engaging and effective content for everyone. Section 5. Surveys – A Direct Line to Your Audience Surveys are invaluable tools for understanding your audience and gathering valuable insights into their preferences, opinions, and needs. By incorporating surveys into your writing, you can create a more interactive and engaging experience for your readers, while simultaneously gathering data that can help you improve your content and better serve your audience. But how do you create surveys that are both informative and engaging? 
The key is to keep them short, simple, and focused on a specific topic. Avoid asking too many questions or making the survey too time-consuming to complete. Instead, focus on asking a few key questions that will provide